So I've just come back from the New York Toy Fair where I found this, but I did have time on the side on a half day to go up the sidewalks of New York and find a few toy shops there, which I've known about for years, and find a few things there as well. So this is a mixture of them. There's some very sweet little ideas. Do you fancy a cup of coffee? Or would you prefer the takeaway sort? It looks very nice too. Look, that looks a proper swirl of coffee there, like that. Let's see if it's liquid or something. Oh. I didn't know it did that. Extraordinary. Push again. Oh, how ridiculous. Well, yes, all right, it's battery operated. There's a little switch at the bottom. Either of them, they both work the same. And if you push them, or well, second time, it says, huh. little vibrating motor to make it work as well. And that's sweet. So, exactly what I like for my toy collection. Beautiful. Here's something that Richard X. Zawitz, who invented the tangle about 30, 40 years ago, he, he introduced me to his grandson, who was a grown-up man, and astonishingly just a sign of one's age, I suppose, but I was very impressed with this, because this is um, something he's invented ooh, back in the 70s, the tangle, and you put it on your wrist, or you just use it as a finger fiddle, but he's been trying for years and years to make a lighted version. At last, he's cracked it, and these ones which rely of a little tremble every now and then, and the light fades is exactly what he's looking for. So he did a swap. I gave him one of my toys and he gave me this wonderful early sample of his Tangle, which illuminates. And I'm very, very pleased with it too. It's a lovely little plaything. Anywhere there, you can just pull it apart like that and you then slap it together again too. And I've had a lot of fun over the years showing Tangle to people, but that is great fun because the lighting effect is good. Very good. Well done, Richard. This is something that, again, I got from a friend I've known for many years, um, Uwe Meffert, invented this about 20 years ago, I think. It's based on the Rubik Cube idea, so the pieces all move that way like that, and that way like that, and this way like this. And you muddle them all up, and the idea is to get all nine colours on each face. And it's quite tricky to do, or like a Rubik Cube, you've got to learn how to do it fast. But I do like it because it moves very, very smoothly. It feels nice in the hand, so it really is a finger fiddle. You can almost fiddle with it in the hand instead of solving it. And he's done a lovely job, and this is a small version, the smallest one I've seen. The original was quite a bit bigger. And I think he's done a lovely job with that, so I'm going to have to go back to my books to find out how to solve the Rubik's Cube in order to actually solve it as well. But as much as anything, it's a really pleasant thing to feel. So, with their efforts, done a nice job there. I went to a Japanese shop there and bought many, many things, and this is one that just intrigued me a little bit. Every pencil normally has a rubber on the end. This has got a pencil cap in case it makes a mess on your clothes, but the pencil cap involves a little tiny sharpener. How extraordinary, that I've never seen before. Every pencil I've ever seen usually has a rubber on the cap, but this one has a sharpener, and when you're using the pencil, you just put it on the end like that and write with it. When you want to sharpen it, you've got the pencil sharpener really immediately to hand, but it doubles up as a cap too, which is a very simple, obvious thing which I just never have seen before. So, well done to the designer. <laughs> this is a lovely one that David Ayers gave me. He's a lovely Texan who involves with inventors there. There's a couple of chopsticks, but look what it's got at the end. It's got a little hand. Look at that. Extraordinary. Just a little hand. So, of course, you use it for picking up things. You do it like that, so the hands point inwards. So, let's have a go at see if I can pick up a few things. Get the two hands pointing inwards like that. And we'll pick up, oh, I don't know, one of these perhaps. Anyone fancy some pie? <laughs> yes, well, yes, a pie. It is a pie, but of course this is something else altogether, and it's not very edible either. Here we are, here's another one. I picked this up at the Museum of Mathematics, and they're actually, both of them, soap bars, but shaped like that of pie. It's got a slightly sticky feeling to it, and if you put some water in it, it'll start to produce a lather, and then you can wash your hands with it. So, soap pies, pies for soap, nice one. Another friend, Dick Esterley, has come up with a couple of very nice ones. This one here, you've got to have a really good fiddle with, and then perform different formations here, some of which I haven't yet remembered, but I think it's going to be a good finger fiddle for me to do it, and then you've got to find ways. One of the tasks is to get all three colours like that in a triangle. These ones aren't in a, those are the red ones in a triangle, but here we are, the yellow ones are separated. There's a triangle, so 
we're halfway there, I suppose. But you want to fiddle around and you can eventually solve it. In the meantime, it's also because of spheres and it feels good in the hand, a good finger fiddle. A slightly more interesting one he produced is this one here, which looks beautiful, like cherries. This has only just been produced because I originally had a metal version. It breaks apart like that into three pieces, cherry sticks. Not magnets at all, they're just held together by, by friction and a bit of springiness too. Those two fit together like that and make a nice little base like that. And the third one comes in over the top like that, if I can get it to go. Clips in the top, Ooh, two there like that. And the third one over the top. Ah, there we are. And then they're what they call orthogonal, which means there, if I hold it like that, you can see the pattern. We've got a horizontal circle there, we've got a vertical one going that way, and a vertical circle going that way. And it's very elegantly done in plastic. A nice one, so well done, Dick Esterly. He's a good, a good job there. And that up was Rufus Butler Seddon, who I've known for many years, and he's made a new version of his wonderful Fanimal. You know, it's a fan with animals on it. This one that he's made by a company he's tied up with, which makes sweets. So there's a packet of sweets inside this. What's it do? Well, we've got to push the button and see. Battery inside, and then we see a performance. Oh my, look at that. He had four different designs and asked me to choose one, and I chose this one, which is the, the Toy Story. So it's got characters and animals and creatures from the Toy Story. And it's just a little short sequence of about 10 seconds or so showing them. There's a fan as well, and when you finish playing with it, you can go to the bottom end and undo it and chew a few sweets as well. Nice one, that. Superb way of packaging sweets. Oh my. And then I went to greeting cards companies there, the MoMA, presumably, in... Um, in the middle of New York, came up with a very, very nice birthday card. In fact, I've just given one to a friend of mine. So this one here, you have to pull it up this way or that way. Or it's, it's going to be this way, I think. It comes into three dimensions to form what looks like a stove. Here we are. That's roughly a stove. There's a place at the back to, to sign it. But the more is when you open the oven. What happens when you open the oven? A cake appears. Look at that. Birthday cake, complete with a candle. Wow. What a beautiful bit of paper engineering that is, isn't it? Closes up, opens up, closes up, opens up. And when you finish with it, you pack it down and put it to the post. Brilliant. Very, very nice idea. And then from that Japanese shop I mentioned earlier, a series of very nice little pop-up cards, which, again, you can write a little note on the back. But this one, I think, is very elegant. It's very small and very sweet, and it shows... Ooh, that way up. Yes, it is. A fish bone. It's got a nice bit of transparency here to make it look as though it's the front of the fishbowl and fish is swing, swimming in it too. And it's a lovely little greeting card. It could be for birthdays, but other events as well. And talking of cards, I came across one birthday card there, which is quite astonishing. I haven't yet performed it, but I've got things like this. It's some... Um, there's instructions there. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a birthday card, but it's self-inflating. And the idea is to write the message there, and when you're ready, you send it to the post, and the person is invited to bang it hard. So we go like that, and shake it like that, and it pops out like that. And look what happens. There's the greeting. It's the old water sachet mixing up with something, uh, say, bicarbonate or something, which gives off CO2 gas, and that's now produced a perfect little cushion saying happy birthday. It worked brilliantly in a few seconds. A great delight to send to people. So I bought half a dozen of those to send to special friends. That was a very, very nice little range of things from New York.